is News Channel 13, WNYT, Albany. And now, live for the Capital Region, Ed Day, Chris Kapastashi, Bob McNamara with sports, and meteorologist Bob Kovacic. This is News Channel 13, live at 11. Good evening. Chris has the night off. The rush to get home for the holidays is underway tonight, but it will be slow going for some Amtrak passengers all across the northeastern United States. A six-alarm fire is burning at Philadelphia's Amtrak station at this hour. Firefighters say the blaze is on the ground floor and basement levels, an area used by construction workers and inaccessible to the public. At least three firefighters reportedly have been injured. Fire broke out about 5 p.m. at the 30th Street station. The station was evacuated about an hour later because of thick smoke. The station is undergoing renovations, and the fire appeared to have broken out in construction materials. That fire is cutting off train service on Amtrak's busy route between New York and Washington. Thousands of passengers are affected. John Gray is live at the Amtrak station in Rensselaer with more. John? And we're here, Ed, because of the uh, immediate local concern. Now, normally when we do see a problem on the Amtrak a train line south of here, there is an immediate effect up here in Rensselaer. Fortunately tonight, that is not the case, at least not yet. What we found when we got to the Amtrak station were a lot of uh, empty seats. That's the reason being that people are getting out of here on time, heading down to New York. Now, the reason being, because there is no train that takes you right from here to Philly, people have to uh, exchange in New York and then head on to Philly or the main route from New York down to Washington. There have been some major delays, as you mentioned, Ed, further down south. We're told that uh, from New York to Washington today, nine trains were stopped in Trenton, New Jersey. Because of the problems in Philly, they had to get off in Jersey. They had the option of taking a bus ride or heading back to New York and calling it quits for the day. Also trains heading from Washington to New York. They were stopped in Delaware. Same option given, take a bus or go back home to the starting point. After 7 tonight, no trains were allowed to go from New York to Washington in either direction. I think that gives you an indication of how uh, slow things are. The real question, Ed, is going to be tomorrow, if people are leaving the capital region heading down to Washington or Philly, uh, they should call 1-800-USA-RAIL. That's 1-800-USA-RAIL. An operator tomorrow should be able to give them information on any possible delays. So the bottom line is uh, people may get out of here on time, no problem tomorrow, Ed. But when they get to New York, if they are trying to get to Washington, uh, depending on how this fire goes and how quickly they can clear it up, they may hit some major delays and they may want to uh, rethink their plans entirely. Also, obviously, anyone who's expecting visitors, uh, relatives from the Washington area, may get to the station tomorrow morning to find they're not on the train. Exactly right. Uh, just because the train's going from New York to here is fine. They may not have made it to New York. They may have uh, taken a bus or they may uh, be back in Washington right now uh, wondering where they can get a plane ticket. Okay, thank you. John Gray reporting live from the Amtrak station in Rensselaer. Very little Christmas spirit circulating around the state capitol tonight. State legislative leaders are just now wrapping up their third meeting of this day. And Governor Cuomo says that thus far the talks have gone nowhere. Senate Majority Leader Ralph Marino and the Assembly Speaker Saul Weprin have asked their staffs to begin new negotiations tonight on a 15-month budget plan. But the governor says it is more important to deal with the current year's deficit because that deficit threatens the state's credit rating and the borrowing ability of local school districts and also local governments. A very emotional memorial service has just ended in the Herkimer County city of Little Falls. The service was for six young children killed over the weekend when fire destroyed their home. Investigators now suspect the fire was accidental and that it started in the kitchen of the two-story home. The children, ranging from 1 to 10 years old, were sleeping in two upstairs bedrooms when the fire broke out early Sunday morning. Their mother was out for the evening, and a teenage babysitter had fallen asleep. Tonight's memorial service was held in the same church, where two of the victims were to have played wise men in the upcoming Christmas pageant. Colony police tell us there are still no major developments in their investigation in the last night's armed robbery. Three men with automatic weapons forced their way into the of the people who own a Chinese restaurant in Menans. The gunman tied up everyone in the home, and they did not leave empty-handed. Diane Estabrook has more on the story. The Chang family owns the Sun Fai restaurant on Broadway in Menans. Police say three gunmen, described as Asian, broke into their apartment around 1 this morning and made off with about $1,500. Colony police say this robbery is similar to those perpetrated by Asian gangs. The perpetrators are going in after dark. They're tying up all the members of the family, adults and children alike. Uh, they make the same type of threats before they leave, that they, they will come back if the people go to the police, that uh, they may do harm to some relatives and to their business. 
Last New Year's Day, the owner of the Dragon House restaurant in Colony was robbed and shot at his home. Two people were arrested in that case, but three similar robberies in upstate New York remain unsolved. Meanwhile, other Asian business people are taking notice of these crimes and taking action. But afterward, we put all the alarm system in our restaurant and in my home. Because I don't worry too much now. Diane Esterbrook, News Channel 13. Let's see what latest on what local police and fire departments are working on at this hour. John Swantek is in the News Channel 13 Operations Center. John? And state police tonight are looking for the man who allegedly robbed a truck driver at uh, gunpoint earlier tonight. It happened on the southbound rest area of the thruway just south of exit 23 near the town of Bethlehem. The truck driver was out of his truck on the way to use a telephone uh, when the man reportedly threatened him with a handgun. Gunman uh, made off uh, in a dark sedan with $120 in holiday spending money. No injuries there. 11.06 is the time. That's it from the Operations Center. Okay, thank you, John. First look at the weather. Bob Kovacic joins us. Christmas Eve, getting colder. Here's how it shapes up. Sun up, 723. Sun down, 426 tomorrow. Uh, partly sunny start in the morning. Temperature mid-20s, kind of breezy, pretty cold. Temperatures will hold in the 20s. Much of the day it will be dry. Then we'll get some flurries tomorrow night. I'll have the forecast for Christmas and uh, travel weather. Heading out to see uh, Aunt Martha or Uncle Harry. We'll have a forecast for you a bit later on. Ed. Okay, thanks, Bob. Up next, News Channel 13 Live at 11. Major changes about to take place inside what was the Soviet Union. We'll have the latest. And the body of former hostage William Higgins begins the long journey home from Lebanon. The body of American hostage William Higgins is scheduled to arrive in the U.S. from Lebanon tomorrow. Higgins' wife says it's not the way she wanted it to end, but she is relieved that the nearly four-year ordeal appears to be over. Lieutenant Colonel William Higgins was commanding the 76-member U.N. Observer Group that monitored the Lebanon-Israeli border when he was kidnapped in February of 1988. The Organization of the Oppressed on Earth claimed it hanged Higgins 18 months later because Israel abducted a Shiite Muslim cleric, Sheikh Obeid. The group released a videotape showing a hanged man and said it was Higgins. There was a lot of doubt. Over the weekend, an anonymous call led police to a body dumped alongside this dirt road. Doctors at American University Hospital in Beirut and UN officials said the partially decomposed body appears to be that of Colonel Higgins. Local medical officials have preliminarily identified the body as that of Lieutenant Colonel Higgins. We are arranging for the body to be flown to Dover Air Force Base for a formal official identification. A flag-draped coffin was driven from the hospital morgue, escorted by two U.S. Embassy cars. The identification won't be official until forensics experts at Dover Air Force Base make a positive identification. Of course, there's always a spark of hope, and, uh, and we had hope that uh, he would be alive, but um, and now uh, we have the confirmation that he's not, but we're still, it's a bittersweet feeling for us, uh, but we're happy to have him home. I.J. Hudson for NBC News, Washington. In other world and national news, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev reportedly will step down over the next two days. Gorbachev and Russian President Boris Yeltsin today discussed giving Russia control over the Soviet nuclear arsenal. The issue of who controls the nuclear weapons has been one of the most pressing questions since Gorbachev's central government collapsed in the wake of the coup attempt last August. It is very apparent tonight the United States wants Russia to take over where the former Soviet Union leaves off. A senior official in the Bush administration said the U.S. will give full diplomatic recognition to Russia this week as an independent nation. The U.S. will also support Russia for the U.N. Security Council seat currently occupied by the USSR. For many in Texas, the worst appears to be over after several days of heavy rain and flooding, but for others, it may just be beginning. The Guadalupe River in southeast Texas is expected to crest tomorrow 16 feet above flood stage. In the Victoria area, police are warning residents in some neighborhoods they may have to make a quick move to higher terrain. Forecasters are calling for more rain on Christmas Day. The statue of St. Irene has reason to weep now. New York police say a group of thieves today stole the icon known for its ability to cry. Five armed people broke into a Greek Orthodox church and forced the church's bishop to hand over St. Irene. The bishop values the gem-encrusted statue at more than $800,000. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world made the pilgrimage to the church in Queens 
to pray to the icon for peace during the Persian Gulf War. A reminder tonight, there is just one more shopping day before Christmas. John Gray was out and about tonight looking for all those last-minute shoppers. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas! Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle With business up and prices down, the malls are hopping. Things have been pretty consistent, very, very busy, actually. You know, we're out of most of our stock. Out of stock, and for shoppers, almost out of time. You usually wait this long, or, uh... Yeah. <laughs> it seems a lot of people wait. Meet the men from the O'Connor family. Every year. This is first minute. <laughs> first minute shopping. December 23rd, we're starting early this year. <laughs> we have anything yet? Oh, yes. We have oh. Fanny Farmer <laughs> Dark Assortment Candy. It's really good. We'll probably finish that before we get home uh, <laughs> because, you know, I feel kind of stranded right now. No supper, you know. This isn't my idea of fun. Is it your idea of fun? Not at all. Well, hang in there, guys. In less than 48 hours, Christmas 1991 will be a wrap. John Gray, News Channel 13. A big thank you goes out tonight to the Albany Executives Association who, instead of exchanging gifts at their holiday party, collected 400 pounds of food for our fill basket with holiday cheer food drive. That brings the total to more than 57,000 pounds of food, but we still have a long way to go to meet our goal of 100,000 pounds. If you can help us out, just drop a non-perishable food item in one of our baskets. They're located in the front of every Price Chopper store. The food drive will continue through January the 5th. Bob Kovacic standing by with more on the forecast. Apparently, you better ask Santa for wool socks and long underwear because it's going to get cold again. First, though, tonight's winning cash 40 numbers. If you played, good luck. If you see news happen, call the News Channel 13 hotline at 1-800-999-WNYT. Bob, and the weather, and I gather you have some kind of special best shot tonight. Well, there's a lot of nice Christmas decorations out there. A lot of people go to a lot of work, yep. a lot of trouble and expense. We got one for you. This is the Kessler Christmas tree. They live in Schenectady, and uh, it not only rotates, uh, but it's got steady changing lights. It goes from blue to blue and red to red to red and green to green to green and blue. And you got to see this tree. I'm told it is fantastic, and they've been... Uh, working on it uh, since the 1950s and getting it uh, bigger and better every year. Nice tree, Christmas spirit. Colder air coming in, 37 are high, 20 the morning low, 32, 16 the normals. Record high a year ago today, 64, record low 12 below. Now mostly cloudy at 11 o'clock, 37, humidity 32%. The barometer during the past hour beginning to rise now. Winds coming in northwest at 14, a trace of rain. To the maps tonight, but we find temperatures dropping back quickly up north, snowing at Messina, 16, light snow at Burlington, a pretty sharp cold front dropping on south. It'll push quickly by late tonight, not much moisture with it, still a bit of rain over in Boston, Providence, that rain going on out. Colder tomorrow, even colder Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. National weather scene will kind of review the past 24 hours. That storm finally got kicked out of Texas, headed quickly to the east and passed out to our south. This was a storm that uh, I thought could threaten us with some snow for Christmas Eve, but the storm weaker and passing further to the south. We were kind of on the northern fringe of it today. That's why we had a little rain, a little sleet in some parts of the area. That moving away quickly. Here's another disturbance coming out of Canada. That little low, kind of a modified Alberta clipper across the Great Lakes tomorrow night. Could bring some snow flurries here. Will bring some snow squalls around the lakes and make much colder weather for the holiday. Now, here's the... Uh, Radar showing uh, some showers and rain over the southeast. A hot spot in the nation today, West Palm, 81 degrees. First cold shot of air comes in tomorrow. Temperatures will stay in the 20s. So if you're shopping tomorrow, Christmas Eve, windy, chilly. Then another shot of cold air Christmas Day. As I said, we could have some flurries in here uh, tomorrow night to whiten the ground in some parts of the area, but it will be just a, a very light dusting. So if you're traveling on Tuesday, a dry day here. Flurries in western and central New York State, around the Great Lakes, and in the mountains for Tuesday night. Tomorrow night, Christmas Eve, there will be a few snow showers. A good surge of cold air comes in, gusty winds bundle up. It will be cold tomorrow night. Some brief heavy squalls around the Great Lakes. Christmas Day will be dry. 
sunny and cold. In fact, temperatures Christmas Day probably not out of the teens. Back with a holiday forecast. Snow game too. Don't go away in a moment. A fair bit colder by morning. That's my forecast. Mostly cloudy through the night. Breezy, colder. No more precip. 20 to 25. Periods of sun. Breezy, colder, but a dry Christmas Eve. Temperatures in the 20s and falling. Breezy, much colder tomorrow night. Flurries in the evening. Perhaps a tiny dusting. 5 to 10 by dawn. Christmas Christmas Day, early, early, early flurries, then sunny, breezy, cold, 15 to 20. The next five days, Thursday will be cold and dry, warming up with a few flurries Friday, and then back into the 30s on Saturday. Like to play the snow game, you got a few days yet to enter. Here's what you do. Kind of simple, I guess. All you do is, well, <laughs> relatively simple. Pick how much snow is going to fall at the Albany County Airport in January 1992. Pick a number, any number. One guest per person. First prize, a Toro 521 snow thrower. Second prize, courtesy of Grassland, a Toro CCR 2000 snow thrower send your guesses direct to us news channel 13 post office box 4035 albany new york 12204 name address and phone number get those entries in by the 31st and we'll see by the first of february if you win and you i am off really the next don't days, know have a good holiday you don't, don't know, know the right answer absolutely if i knew that i could work upstairs and be whatever you mean work. really upstairs not on the second floor of this building right. okay <laughs> have a good christmas you too okay thanks Bob. Head and Sports, the Knicks try to keep their win streak alive on the road in Minnesota. Roger will have highlights, and a little later, we'll go Christmas caroling with children who just can't quite remember all the words. Santa Claus is coming to town. They're not cry, they better not close, they better not hit, I'm telling you why. Sports. Rogers with us. Max on vacation, and you're leading with the Knicks. We're talking hoop, and Knicks are on a roll. They have a half game lead over Boston right now, Ed, in the Atlantic Division. Knicks have won four straight because they're playing defense. Riley's Knicks lead the NBA in least points allowed. And tonight they're on the road in Minnesota. Here's the shot of the night, folks. Gerald Wilkins, 52 foot three pointer, count it. Knicks, 82 65 after three. Patrick Ewing, yeah, ho-hum. 25 points, 14 rebounds, six block shots. The Knicks win over the T-Wolves, 97-91 to make it four in a row. Derek Coleman, 27 points, 11 boards. Jersey won against Atlanta. Charlotte won in Philadelphia. Miami beat Orlando. Ronnie Cycli with 27. Cleveland over Utah. Dallas won at Houston. San Antonio beat Sacramento. Kings head coach Dick Mata said tonight, He's going to retire at the end of the season. College basketball, UConn over Fairfield. Seton Hall big against Fairleigh Dickinson. Now to the NHL, the Rangers tried to equal their longest winning streak of the season when they sought their sixth straight win tonight against the Devils at Madison Square Garden. Man, they're playing well. It's Mark Messier. He's got the game face on. And Rangers came to play tonight. Second period, Brian Leach. Great feed up ice to Mike Gartner, who beats Chris Terreri high. 2-0 Rangers. Two goals for Gartner. Mike Richter stopped 25 shot. Rangers win 3 0 over the Devils. Joey Mullen with four goals. Pens beat the Islanders 6 3. Hartford 4 3 against Buffalo. Toronto 3 1 over Winnipeg. In the NFL, you know the saying coaches hired to be fired. Today, Dan Henning got the axe in San Diego. Henning said Charger teams were the kings of the close call, but hey, the bottom line is this year's record 4 12, giving Henning a 16 32 record in three seasons. A leading candidate to replace Henning is Georgia Tech's Bobby Ross. As many as uh, nine NFL teams could change coaches. Bill Parcells, that's the name. That's the top everybody's list. The latest is an unconfirmed report of Parcells being cited tonight in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We'll keep you posted. While some head coaches are headed for the unemployment lines, Bruce Costler of the Jets are headed for the playoffs. In Miami yesterday, in overtime, Raul Allegra, 30 yards out for the win and a trip to the postseason party. Bingo. The 8-8 eight eight Jets play at Houston on Sunday. Ed Koslip isn't worried about his team being ready. Well, I told him to enjoy it. And then Wednesday, uh, when we come back, really we're coming back tomorrow. We're, we're not taking a full day off. We're coming to work tomorrow. And uh, they know when it's time to work, and they know when it's time to have some fun. Speaking of having some fun, look at the 49ers tonight. How did the 49ers not make the playoffs? Speaking of the playoffs, the 8-8 eight eight Jets are in, of course. They're at Houston Sunday at 4 o'clock. The Raiders at Kansas City Saturday at 12.30. In the NFC, Atlanta at New Orleans Saturday at 4. Dallas probably now going to play at Chicago Sunday at 12.30. Finally, 
Riddick Bow knows a little about marketing to help promote himself as a possible next opponent for heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. Bo showed up today at the front gate of Holyfield's house dressed up as, there you see, Santa Claus making a bid in front of the TV cameras. Holyfield was not home at the time of Bo's display. Anything goes. Yeah, you see boxing box. moving in the direction of wrestling here? It's getting pretty darn close. It is indeed. With Reddick Bo kicking and punching. That's right, he was the one who was kicked. He You're was, here tomorrow, right? I am here tomorrow. Well, I'll still wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. Ed. Up next, another look at tonight's top stories. Also, the Rise and Shine forecast. It's 11.30, time to check up on tonight's top stories. Former Lincoln Savings owner Charles Keating has now posted bail. He is expected to be freed from jail tomorrow, but his son Charles Keating III remains behind bars following a hearing in which the judge refused to lower the bond of either the father or son. They have been indicted on federal racketeering charges. A six-alarm fire is burning at Philadelphia's Amtrak station at this hour. At least three firefighters have been injured. Fire broke out about 5 o'clock at the 30th Street station. The station was evacuated about an hour later because of the thick smoke. It is also affecting train travel, they say, all across the Northeast. John Gray is standing by at the Amtrak station in Rensselaer. And John, when we last talked, Rensselaer, at least, had not yet been affected. No, there are no delays here uh, locally, Ed, but having uh, said that, that's a little bit deceptive because if someone is traveling just south to New York City, no problem. If they are going to go down to Washington or Philly, well, all bets are off tonight because the train line from New York to Washington is simply not running in either direction because of the fire in Philly. They are putting people on buses or uh, not putting them on anything at all if they don't want to choose to go on a bus. Uh, bottom line for people, if they're going to head down to uh, Philadelphia or Washington, call ahead tomorrow. The number is 1-800-USA-RAIL, R-A-I-L. They can give you an indication of how long the delay will be if there is still a delay tomorrow. And as you pointed out at the top of the news, if someone locally is expecting family on the train from Washington or Philly, somewhere down south like that, they may see some major delays. They may not get here at all unless they take a bus route or an alternative route to get up here to Albany or Rensselaer. Ed. John, are there any more trains expected in there tonight, or is that station about closed till morning? It's pretty much closed until morning, Ed. Uh, again, no problems here as of yet, but it's once you get down to New York City and you try to head out of there further south, that's when you hit the delay.